So Dave was just telling me that a dealer friend of his, and he would go around and try to find the crappiest thing at the show, and we think this might be a candidate. Hi, I'm George the Antique Nomad. Come with me as I wander the country in search of valuable vintage, amazing antiques, and cool collectibles. We'll buy, sell, and trade at antique malls, shops, and shows, estate sales, flea markets, thrift stores, anywhere people go to find really interesting things that just aren't made anymore. So come on, let's go. Hey, it's George, and this is the last chance I get for this season to show you things from West Palm Beach Antique Show. And this weekend, there are some fun things and some different things than we saw last month in my booth and others. So let's take a look. This picture in the middle is, in fact, a Blanco, and it is pure ruby red rather than tangerine, and that's a harder piece to find. They've got it priced at 69 It's Crackle. It's actually a pretty good price for what it is. Here's a rather incredible piece of, you could call it Majolica, but I'm sure it's by one of these specific houses, possibly Royal Ducks. Uh, the booth is closed, so I can't really get in to take a look, and I'd be a little nervous to pick that up without assistance from the dealer anyhow, but we'll have to come back and take a closer look at that. That is quite handsome. That's going to date to about 1910. And then there's this flower basket quilt top that has never been finished on the back. This should be a 1920s or 30s. Reds and that pattern are quite desirable with quilt collectors. So here's what glamping looks like if you're a collector. This booth belongs to Sonny. He has lived in Jupiter his entire life. He's, I think, a little younger than I am, probably. And he loves taking old trailers and turning them into other things. And this is his latest project. I sold him some of those signs. Closed today was something I had, and I recognized that one right away. He obviously sells signs and some other stuff, too. He, he has a pretty good eye for interesting things. I like this old child-sized galvanized tin bathtub. That's something you don't see very often, and they can sell for a couple of hundred dollars. I've even seen people turn them into sinks. Fallout shelter sign is a nice big one. But yes, this is a very fun, fun, fun thing to see at a show. And what a great uh, display. Nice thing is, it looks like it could rain, so this is pretty rainproof. Out to lunch, that's another sign he bought for me. And I think I sold him, please don't ask for credit. So I get a kick out of seeing things that I sold reappear at shows in a different guise. So my friend Dave and I are doing some early morning shopping just to see what uh, may have come out since the last time we came through. My last show to November, ignore all prices, okay? Gotta get rid of a lot of stuff. You see imported in Long Island, but these are Italian, and so that's a little different kind of fish than you see that uh, was done by Blanco or Pilgrim. Only $40 for that decanter. That seems like a pretty good price these days. And then the child-sized sewing machine is cute at 95 The Hall Aladdin teapot in the great cobalt blue color is $30. Looks like the knob's been repainted, though. Dave specializes in antique advertising, so it doesn't take him long to get through a booth. Not nearly as long as it does me, so he's kind of sprinted on ahead. But I'm going to stop and show you some of the things along the way. I love this critter. This would have sat outside a, probably a grocery store. And you can see that it's been ridden out a lot because it's worn in all the appropriate places. I think you would put a nickel or a dime in and these things would bounce up and down. And then this is a really cool table. Now, I think this has some age. It might be 1970s or 80s. Brass is coming back in style and the storks holding up the top Figural things that held up glass tabletops were very popular in the late 70s and into the 1980s. And that one's very impressive looking. I wish I could tell you a price, but this dealer doesn't have anything marked. and They're not here to ask. And then look at this guy with the huge bill. Isn't that cute? Typically these sell for about $250 to $350. This may seem like a crazy thing, but if you're leaving larger pieces, you can actually go walking around and... Just have people call you, and if they want something, you can give them a price, and they can put it on Venmo or Zelly, and there you go. 
it is a different world these days as far as that. It gives dealers a little more freedom, I suppose, to go out shopping or doing other things. I like these end tables. It's strange that they have a different finish, though, but I do like the style. It'd be nice to have them both put back to the same finish. What'd you find? Yeah, some of these are pretty neat back here. They got the elephant stool and stuff. The Lion King. Yeah, Lion King. That is pretty cool. Interesting collection. Yeah, and here's, here's how they transport the uh, road vehicles. Wow, that's cars. neat. So this is like 1950s? Yeah, 1954, I see. Yeah, yeah and that looks like a 50s era. Oh, this guy older. here, his name is Maduro. He was a clown for the circus, and he took their photograph for him. That's him there, and this is him here. Interesting. This is him, and I'm not sure if that's a real signature or not, but that's Clyde Beatty. Oh, Clyde Beatty with the Clyde yeah, Beatty Circus, sure yeah. Hard to say. Yeah, you'd have to compare because it could be he yeah. just wrote that down that's to remember right. where he was. Interesting, though. And, and there's another one here. I want to show you some of these others. I, I bought the whole packet. I paid good money for them, but this guy here... Is that Buffalo Bill or no? Uh, he has the same look, but he looks a little broader in the face. And I think Buffalo Bill died the pretty before, before, before this. this. Really yeah. cool, though. This photo here, this guy here was out of uh, was out of Riverside, California. Bob Tabor. He did some photos. This photos are worth ten grand, fifteen grand. Interesting. Uh, but that's Bob Tabor, and this was called the Lion Tamer. That's cool. So this is a... Uh, so this is some really good, uh, really interesting photos. And then I have one of Kit Carson Jr. in there. Oh, I see. Ringling Brothers, the Athletic Stadium, yep. I'm loading bags. This is very interesting. The, uh, so you bought it as a collection. Are you I selling it as... I bought the whole as? collection. Are you selling it as a collection? Individual or a collection, but they're not going to be cheap, you know. It's no, not, I'm I, I mean, sure. I mean, one. there's uh, there's uh, Kit Carson Jr. right there. Oh, very interesting. That's him. And then I want to show you the back. Oh, very cool. The Sterling Circus, Kit Carson Jr., 1930-something, Baraboo, Wisconsin. That is really neat. So yeah, yeah. somebody really loved the circus and put these together over a number of years. Yeah, and I think for the whole album, I'd get about uh, 500. Yeah, I imagine. For, for, the for that many pictures. Yeah. 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 And and even at, there's 23 of them, so based on $20 a piece. Even. Yeah, And this here is some kind of a ride. I don't even know what that is. Yeah, it looks no like fun, though. I no what that is. I love that kind of stuff. That, that was my personal collection of uh, things. And then there's museum photos here, museum archival photos here. Very interesting. Machinery. Yeah, I mean, it's a bullshit. You do have you do have some pretty neat stuff. Yeah. I always like paper. And then this cutout is interesting, an old store display of some sort. This guy does have cool stuff. Uh, you know what this is? It's uh, Disneyland. Oh, it's from Disney. It's from a Disney auction. Oh. Yeah, there it is there. They, they did it. Oh, I see. It was actually Beach something Club, they Disney did for, meeting, oh. for the meetings and stuff. Oh, they used it, oh so. I see. They had it made for that. Well, that's interesting. It's a beautiful uh, see-through. Uh, yeah, I actually, I like the piece. How much is that? A uh, hundred. A hundred? Yeah, that's actually pretty off. cool. I'm not sure what I'd do with it, but I'm tempted. Yeah. That is neat. I'm going to zero in on that. And on the other it says, it says, to Lottie from Papa. Oh, that's it's neat. Written on it. It's just amazing. And you can hear the yolk in there, the dried up yolk. Wow. Still. Oh, that's, a, that's incredible. They must have lacquered it or something so it wouldn't break. No, I did. Yeah. Yeah, I did because it was so delicate. Oh, yeah. No, that like thing a, can uh, fall right apart. Yeah, I put a uh, nail polish uh, oh, I get, yeah. hardener on it. Here's another one of these lotus style lamps that seem to be coming back into style from the 80s that people either love or hate, but um, they are selling. And this one's in sort of a brown color I haven't seen before. I'm used to seeing pink or white. They go from as little as a single little reading lamp all the way to big floor lamps. Okay, so here's something that helps you identify something newer. It looks old. It's cool. It's hand painted. It's nicely done porcelain. But then when you look at the bottom, it says, not for food purpose, for decorative use only. And that's something that is on Chinese-made items because they use lots of lead paint 
and other things that will poison you and so they're required to put not for food purpose on it so that tells you it's a newer one red would be the color but i like the yellow too that pops interesting no one noticed or they didn't know what to do about the ones missing the discs maybe but yeah these are fun called happy day from germany so dave was just telling me that a dealer friend of his and he would go around and try to find the crappiest thing at the show and we think this might be a candidate. It's brand new. It's hideous. The proportions are terrible. I'm sure somebody loves it and I'm insulting them and I'm sorry, but it is so bad it's, well, bad. I'd like to say it's so bad it's good. Give it 20 years and we'll say it's so bad it's good. That's what kitsch comes from. If I had the budget and could find a bunch of pieces like this, I would probably collect this Royal Beirut devil wear from the early 1900s. Always has to do with gambling and it always has the winged devil. I think there was some sort of the social implication there. These are some pieces you don't see very often. Big trays. This is a match safe and the reason we know it's a match safe rather than a wall pocket is it has this rough spot below which is where you would strike the matches little serving dish here, toothpick holder with the dice. I just think this is the neatest stuff. It's so vivid, it's so vibrant, and it was made over a hundred years ago, so it's truly antique. This gal has quite a, an outfit on and was very proud of it. Looks like something from about 1940, I would say. I like the shape and the convex frame, and I always am drawn to photographs of black people because, you know, there were a lot of folks for whom this would have been money and that would have been a very special thing and so that's why you put on your finest and so I think there's a little more uh, specialness to it in that regard. And then this gal is quite lovely. Chinese jewelry is becoming rather popular with collectors and this is a nice carved cinnabar piece priced at 95 which is about the right price these days because there is a lot of interest in older Chinese jewelry. I'd like to show this because I think this might be the best and most complete sewing kit that I've ever seen. It's the best that we've seen and we've looked at a lot of others. I imagine that you have because you deal in this uh, very good uh, quality stuff and I've, I've never seen so many pieces and the condition is amazing. It was never used. Almost it never looks used. like it was never used. And it's an 1819 Hallmark. That's yeah. interesting, too. It is gold rather than gilded silver. That is quite stunning. And I can understand why it's 6850 because it's the top of the market. It's, it might be one of the best ones left in existence. Look at all of the detail. It's even got a nice mirror in it. Hello. Mother of Pearl pen, the darning tools, the needle cases. All of these things individually would be collectible if you were to find them. And you will find pieces like this sometimes outside of sewing cases. But good to uh, note that these are not always verme, which is gold wash over silver. Sometimes they are actual gold. That is just an incredibly beautiful piece. If you were a sewing collector, this would be your holy grail. And speaking of the French, here's an interesting military ensemble. It's got the Republican Guard Paris cap, the officer's dress sword. This is an ammo pouch, which they say is called a giberne. These are new terms to me. The Imperial Eagle is an artillery division. Next to it, we have an Indo-Persian lion head dagger with its sheath, and then a pair of dueling pistols. All of these items are priced between $1,500 and $2,500. Please comment in the space below here and also hit the thumbs up button to like this video. If you haven't subscribed, click the subscribe button below. Also hit the bell below to be notified of new videos coming every Monday and Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern. And thank you so much for following along. Let's go back to this video. Here's something that you might find in the wild still. These are Raya rugs. These are made in Scandinavia in the 1960s and 70s. The modernists love them. 
but you will sometimes see them in houses where people have kind of forgotten about them, hopefully in an old rec room or someplace that's not had a lot of traffic and has had climate control so that they don't rot out in the back. If you do find them in good condition, like this one seems to be, they're worth several hundred dollars. Well, he's got some really amazing pieces. Here, this portable box. This would be for scents and perfumes and a grooming kit. Is that French? Yes. Yeah, very, very handsome. How much is that piece? Expensive, I know. I'm trying to remember. Sorry about that. I didn't mean I can't to. can't remember where I put the price. Oh, that's okay. It's a couple of thousand. Though. Yeah. Oh, I believe it. I've never seen one so complete. Yeah. They see Cava liqueur sometime. Very and interesting, though. It's a roll though. top. Yeah, that's really it's amazing. Close as, uh, it's a roll top. Oh, and it is actually a timbre roll top, not oh, just yes. a cylinder. Oh, oh yeah. That's amazing. So all those individual pieces. Yes. It's just incredible that a cabinet maker would scale their work down to that size. Right. It seems like so much work. And of course, I'm a big fan of dresser items. And mm -hmm. I see. Is that a Stuben? Is that blue orine? This is Stuben. This is Stuben. This is Stuben. Very nice. Yeah, beautiful pieces. You do get really amazing stuff. And the little vase here looks like it's guilloche, is that right? Uh, it is. In an orange color. I'm not used to yeah, seeing that Yeah, it's a very shade. unusual color. Very unusual. Color. Yeah, I thought so too. And the enamel florals. Yeah. Wonderful stuff. As usual, you always have great things. Rolled paper. All of these are paper rolls, and they put them together into this box. That is just amazing. It's a tea caddy. Wow. Where would this have been done? French. French also, yeah. Yep. And is this 1860s? Right. 18th century. Yeah. Oh, 18th, 18th century. century. Wow. Yeah. They're rare to find. Yeah. That's Especially incredible. In condition like that. Yeah, the condition's amazing. And how much is something like that? Sorry about that. <laughs> you just had it out. There we go. 36.95. But I've never seen another one. That's just stunning. Thank yeah, you for showing me that. I have to say, I would have just assumed carved wood and not really paid right. close attention to it if you hadn't right. made uh, notice of it. Real gemstones, so rubies Real, or garnets? Or? Garnets and uh, emeralds. That's beautiful. On the corners. And all the enamel. And then, and it's in absolutely fantastic condition. It's gilded silver and it's a music box. Wow. And a very good quality music box mm -hmm. of that. Is the musical movement Swiss, do you think, or does... Yeah, probably. yeah, That is gorgeous. And I imagine, again, not inexpensive, but where are you going to it's find like another $4, one? It's like $4,000. $4,000, yeah. That's just phenomenal. And it's in perfect condition. All the gemstones are there. Well, it's just such a pleasure to see such nice things at this show. Thank you very much for showing me. Yep. Let's take a look at some chintz transferware. This is English, primarily. The Japanese did some, too. But these are mainly English pieces. This is the Royal Winton pattern. These are all different patterns. These are little breakfast sets. It's nice to find them complete. The black field typically is a little more pricey than the other colors because look how it sets off the flowers. Chintz was very popular after the Second World War because all through the war era, the English primarily had whiteware because all of the materials it would take to make anything else were being used for the war effort. So after the war people wanted as much color as possible and they got it. Here's a paisley chintz. These were done by a number of different companies. Royal Winton did it, Shelley did it. Pretty much every English company made some line of chintz. Chintz just means it's an all-over floral pattern that covers the entire surface of the object. Speaking of Shelley, there is a huge collection of Shelley cups and saucers and teapots. Shelley was made in England until 1966. It's always been considered a little finer, and there are books on Shelley. There are collector organizations for Shelley. Some of those patterns are rather rare. You can find the basic, like a dainty blue chintz for maybe as little as $25 or $30 for a cup and, sa and saucer but some of these patterns are very hard to find and very pricey. Yeah. How long does it take you I've, to do I've one of I've been that making size? them for like almost 18 years. How long does it take you to do one that's like uh, that That size? one, it took like almost a month. Wow. It's like, you have to understand, it's one by one by oh, one. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. And you get tired of it, and then you said, all right, tomorrow. I'll do more, <laughs> right, exactly. Would you use like tweezers on some of those? No, no, everything just, with my just, hand, just by hand with a E6000. Just ham oh, E6000's the best stuff, yeah. yes. 
Oh, that's great. Very fun. This is my friend Derek's space. He mainly gets big things. He gets a lot of real primitives and farm items. And some of this stuff's pretty high powered. Now this is a nice little working butter churn. And it's got a patent that's going to date to about the 1880s. Fun orange color, original paint. These are rather spectacular. They are French transferware. He has a pair. The scenes are really detailed. And they are in not entirely perfect condition, but pretty good condition. I think he's asking 1200 for those. Here's a neat sampler. And this one's a little different because it's not just ABCs, it's actually a poem. About being the children's friend. We all do fade as a leaf. And this one is signed in the needlepoint by Mary Mook, it says. And this is dated 1847. You see a lot of these from this era, and they're generally in the four to five hundred dollar range for that design and that age. He gets a lot of primitive farm cabinets. This is cute with Easter coming. Look at this little child seat. Somebody hand painted, and it's got crack allure. Neat old banjo here. It needs strings and some things. It's not by a famous maker, but boy, that's a cool one. And then here's a Bakelite Mahjong set, completely original in the original box. Bakelite tiles and Bakelite holders and the counter. The counter is often missing. He's asking a hundred and a half for this. That's actually a pretty good price for one in that kind of condition. And then just for something completely different, he got these. These are original illustrations from the Black Opal comic book, which is somewhat apocryphal, but they're really interesting. They're done on the blue line paper. This is all original pen and ink art. I think this particular one, gruesome though it may be, is maybe the most interesting. Pan Galactic Security Services is taking out this alien. Thank goodness for Pan Galactic Security Services. I think he has it priced at a couple hundred very different for him, a real departure considering everything else he has are old jelly cabinets, corner cabinets, this old painted farm cabinet, and then there's this cypress table and I think this is really neat. He's got 350 on this which I think is rather a good deal. It weighs a ton but these burl tables of various woods are popular now and cypress is something that obviously you see in the south because that's where you see cypress trees. And then one last thing that's really neat is this old seed cabinet. So he really does a great presentation of this type of thing in a way that uh, makes it possible to visualize using it in a home interior. He does shows, uh, high-end shows in Nashville and other places and all the way up the coast. He's actually been shown on flea market flip because he sold at the elephant's trunk. Good dealer with some really neat stuff. I never get tired of showing my friend Ken and Gail's booth because, like me, they are very eclectic. And somehow, they manage to get even more stuff in the space than I do. I don't know how they do it, but they get all sorts of fun categories. And they just line them up because they have so much of everything. So there's rows of fishing lures and rows of still banks and rows of big little books and children's toys. Look at all these cute bowhair bears. Here we've got a rather hard to find baby lamb nursery. This was by Marks, who we think of for tin toys, but they were starting to venture into some plastics even back in 1951 when this came out. And this is complete with all of the original bits. It's got bassinets and little beds and I don't see an incubator, but they've got the uh, air tank, so it's really cool to see it complete. It's priced at $175. It does have its original box as well. 
micro set in the box from 1935. Now we see a lot of these, but to find one complete with specimens and a good graphic on the box makes this a little more special. I think this type of show you have to have a real mix of items because uh, if you just specialize in one type of jewelry or pottery or clothing, it just, uh, it'll, it'll attract specific buyers, but the general public is looking for a number of items. And the younger crowd, it's, it's interesting. They go for things like uh, transistor radios or old cameras. Uh, just something interesting. Yeah, something fun to put on the shelf, and they don't necessarily know what they're collecting right. yet. So you've got to hit them with a lot of different right. things so like that I, they can see I it. I saw political buttons, and people of all political persuasions like these buttons, and they, you know. Yep. And yeah, they're mostly yeah. between two and ten dollars, and it's an easy thing to get started with. Yeah. And yeah, I I couldn't agree more. I mean, and being a specialist is great when you get your person, yeah. but you can starve to death while you're waiting for your person. Like with marbles, a lot of people put them in jars and then charge you know twenty thirty dollars for the jar. I sell them individually. Right. And the people that I attract, a lot of times, are like fathers with kids, and I, you know, they buy for a dollar. You pick, and they think and it's the, really fun. And the kids pick them out, and you know, it, it's fun. And you got to have fun for the kids here too. I think so too, because I, I sell to kids. Kids yeah. are interested in this stuff if and, you and, make it interesting. And what I found, the people that return, if you treat people nice and, res and with respect, they'll come back. And I have so many returning customers. Absolutely, yeah. Well, you're a good guy and you're easy to talk to and yeah. deal with, and that makes a difference. And, I mean, you can't just sit there and shrug. Yeah. We all rediscovered board games during this last year, and they have some neat old ones. Sergeant Preston of the Mounties, with a great graphic right there. Stop and go safety game, Uncle Wiggly. The Big Chief game board that plays 12 different games. The Six Million Dollar Man, I sold that one recently myself for about $20. Mork and Mindy, that's where Robin Williams got his start. A very silly show. Bess Parker and the Trailblazers from the Daniel Boone Show and then go to the head of the class. I think that might be the only one that's still in production. This is cute, it's a Show and Hut player piano. And while Show and Hut is most known these days for their pianos, the thing that people really love are their old circus figures from about 1900, all jointed wood, hand-painted. They're very expensive and collectible. The player piano is neat, though, because it has a wind-up key. They also did just regular pianos that kids could bang on, but this one's 95 with the player working, which is a pretty good price. One booth here that is not antique and vintage for sure, and that is this booth full of, well, you people in the cold parts of the country refer to them as house plants. In Florida, they're just known as plants. And they are right behind me here. And there's some very pretty ones. So I'm going to look at those. In the meantime, this is George the Antique Nomad. It's great to be with you again. I will report to you with more adventures soon. And happy collecting, happy hunting in the meantime. Good to see you all. Bye-bye now. Thanks for joining me again in the fun and fascinating antique community here where online meets the real world. Please click the subscribe button below, click the bell to be notified when new videos upload, leave a comment below, and hit thumbs up to like this video. Links to our online social media daily posts and our items for sale are in the description. This is George at The Antique Nomad. Bye for now!